Hello and welcome again. In the last video we started talking about the security of the RSA signature and I mentioned uh, one thing that was that the schoolbook RSA which is just the one that we just saw is uh, susceptible to forgery and the last thing we saw was this um, uh, picture that I show you that is when the attacker Eve is able to replace the public um, parameters and pro uh, the original was where N and E that were done by Bob but Eve could go ahead and replace that so now Alice will believe that Eve is the one that signs the messages so and so I didn't say this in the last video but uh, this attack could be prevented if you use certificates now certificates it's something that we haven't seen yet but it's an important feature of cryptography now the second attack that can be done in the RSA is an algorithmic attack. An algorithmic attack basically is a mathematical attack. In this case is computing the private key, which is uh, D, which is the private exponent. Now if an attacker gets a hole on this private key, then that attacker could sign messages. So Alice I will believe that that attacker is actually Bob. So that would be pretty bad. But so how can this be done? Exactly the same way that is done in the RSA, which is factoring the public modulus, which is the product of two primes. And remember, this is a, a hard problem. So that's why you need to uh, choose your modulus to be at least 10, 24 bits or more. So that's an, another attack. And it can be prevented, of course, using that large N. And the last one I want to mention here, which is, uh, very specific for this attack, for this RSA signature, is the existential forgery. Now, the existential forgery, uh, basically what it is, is the attacker, Eve, will send a message and the signature actually will be valid. And the only information that Eve uh, knows is actually the public uh, public parameter, which, in the, which is the modulus and the public exponent. And this is actually possible, but there's a little drawback here for, for E for the attack, and you'll, we'll see that in a second. So let's look at that existential forgery. So this existential forgery, basically what it is, is uh, this is the setup. So Bob is not doing anything, basically. The only thing that it, Bob is doing here is just nothing, observing, basically. And Eve is the one that is going to perform the attack, basically send a message that is going to be with a signature and that signature will be valid for that specific message. And so the way Eve goes about it is, Eve is gonna do is gonna choose a signature S, basically just a number, and ZN, and N here is the public modulus. So a number between uh, zero and N minus one. So any number there will do. So Eve can do that, well, Eve knows N, so Eve can choose something here. Now the next step is, She's going to actually compute a message. So she computes a message M, and the way that, that she computes the message M is she takes the signature that she already chose here, and she can do that because she knows N. I take it to the E power, E is the public exponent, so this can be done. Modulus, the public modulus. So all this information is in the hands of Eve, so she can actually compute that M. So now, if what we can do, what Eve can do is just she's gonna send the this pair of numbers M, which is a message that was constructed uh, from the signature and then the signature itself. So she is kind of like the reverse thing that Bob is actually doing. Bob first chooses a message and then sign it, signs that message. Now Eve in the other case, she's gonna choose the signature first and then she's gonna create the message from that signature. So the message is as to the e modulo n, and this is a modular exponentiation. So that message here goes to the insecure channel. Alice now is going to uh, take this uh, pair of numbers that is here, which is the m and the s. And remember, how does Alice check that this uh, signature is valid for this message? So what she does is takes the signature to the public exponent and take the modulus m. And of course, she's gonna get M because that's exactly how M was constructed. M was constructed in a way that is just S to the E modulo N. And so when she reverses, when she tries to compute that, of course, she's gonna get M here. 
So this is going to be a valid signature for that message. Now, so see here, this is kind of backwards here, what Eve does. Now, you may think, well, this is a big problem, but it, there is a little drawback here for Eve. So the attacker, in this case Eve, cannot control the semantics of the message M. So she cannot control M because M has to be calculated. The only thing that she can control is the signature S, but she doesn't know what the message is. For example, she cannot create a signature valid for a, for a message in plain English that makes sense because then she, does, she doesn't know what M she's going to get on, on, unless she chooses S first. And she might not, this M can, might not make any sense in English in that case, if we think about sending messages as text. Um, even though that is the case, the attacker cannot control the semantics of the message. Basically, what Alice will get is, yes, the signature is valid, but this message doesn't make any sense. Then, then she can discard that, that pair of numbers. Now, this feature, even though the message here, uh, the semantics of the message cannot be controlled by Eve, this is not a desirable feature. And one of the reasons for that is, um, at least one of the reasons that you can think about it is, uh, let's suppose that Alice, Alice in this case is a person, but in reality, this is going to be just a computer. So suppose in this case that the computer takes this pair of things, and if the signature is valid, then uh, the computer is going to store that in in the hard drive, for example. Okay, that's going to be a pretty bad thing because then Eve, what Eve can do, Eve he can uh, actually send so many messages that the hard drive could, uh, can is full. So it's going to be an attack on the computer. So that cannot be good. Um, it's going to overflow the capacity of the computer if that is the case if uh, if the computer here is going to store this as long as the signature is valid so that's not something that you want to have in a in a system in a signature system now this problem can be solved using pattern as always uh this is going to be a little bit of um randomness in the way that the signature is sent so this one this uh, rsa which is described here is the school book rsa which is usually not used in practice in practice, you will do this with ACE uh, padding. So that's basically uh, uh, basically all uh, I have to say about that thing. But before we finish the video, let me just give you an example here to be a little bit more clear on the existential forgery. So let's say we take the same values from the ex previous example. So the example we did in the last video for the signature. Now, if you remember that in the previous example, we had a a public modulus, which was 20, 21, which is the product of two primes, and the public exponent is 155, and the private exponent was 1583. So this is the situation here. So let's look at the picture. So the picture will be, uh, so Eve is going to send a, a measure in, in a signature, and the signature is going to be valid. Now remember, the procedure here is uh, Eve is going to choose a number in Z, 2021, so you can choose just a signature there. In this particular say let's, case, let's say the signature is 1158. So she has the liberty of choosing that signature. And once she chooses the signature, she can compute the message M, which is 1158, which is the signature to the public exponent, which is 155 modulo the public modulus. So she computes that uh, M here. So if you actually go ahead and compute all of this, you're going to get a message M, which is uh, 1702. So that's the message, and the signature is 1158. What does, that's the number that was chosen by Eve. So now Eve now sends that through the insecure channel, and then Alice is going to get, of course, the message 1702 and the signature 1158 that was chosen by Eve. And now she computes, Alice wants to uh, check whether or not the signature is valid for that message. And then she does with the signature validation for the RSA is, which is take the signature to the public exponent and modulo the public modulus. And of course you get this number because that's the way that message was computed. So Alice says, okay, this is a valid signature. So maybe this uh, message doesn't make any sense for Alice. So she can discard all of that uh, there. But this is basically the existential forgery attack. 
So that's basically all I have to say about the RSA signature. So in the next video, we'll talk about another uh, signature, which is the Elgamal signature. It's going to be also based on discrete logarithms, but it's going to be a little bit different from, from the one that we just saw. So I'll stop the video now, and I will see you in the next video.